Welcome to Who's There, a show about cloud identity. In the last episode of Who's There, I talked about why Identity Platform is awesome and how to enable it in your GCP project. Today, I'm showing you how to integrate Identity Platform into your Android app in Java. If you haven't enabled Identity Platform yet, I recommend you check out the last episode of Who's There before proceeding. You also need an Android app. In Android Studio, start with an existing app or create a new one. And if Android doesn't happen to be your jam, check out the Getting Started videos for iOS and web, both linked below. All right, with all the prerequisites out of the way, let's get started. In the Cloud Console for my project, I selected the Identity Platform tab. I previously added email and password authentication. So if you haven't yet, click Add a Provider and select Email Password. There are lots of other providers to explore, but today I'm just going to stick with this one. On the Providers page, you see a link in the upper right for application setup details. This pops up a window with brief getting started information. When I click the Android tab, I see, to get started with Android, you'll need to register it and add Firebase configuration to your app. Learn more. I click Get Started with Firebase, which takes me to an entirely new console. Some of the information is the same as the Cloud Console, like project name and ID, but then there are all these new tabs down the side that say Develop, Quality, Analytics, and Grow, and a big pop-up in the middle asking about data sharing. If you've used Firebase before, this probably looks familiar, but it's entirely possible you've never even heard of Firebase, let alone used it. So let's talk about what's going on here. Firebase is a suite of products to help you build your app and grow your user base. It includes SDKs for Objective-C and Swift for iOS, Java and Kotlin for Android, JavaScript for web, as well as several web frameworks like Angular. There are game-specific SDKs for Unity and C++ and so much more. I can make a whole series of videos just on Firebase, but fortunately, the Firebase team has already done that. If you're interested in finding out more, check out the documentation in the Firebase YouTube channel, both linked below. So in many ways, Firebase is the perfect complement to Google Cloud. Very broadly speaking, Google Cloud products focus on server-side solutions like App Engine, Compute Engine, Cloud Functions, Kubernetes Engine, and Cloud Run. And Firebase products focus on client-side solutions like authentication, cloud messaging, cloud storage for Firebase, and so on. And I admit that it's challenging to pin down the relationship between Google Cloud and Firebase. So for my oversimplified explanation is that Firebase is a way to access some Google Cloud Platform products from a client application. Specifically for Identity Platform, this explanation works well. The Firebase Auth SDKs enable you to access Identity Platform functionality from your client app. With that in mind, let's head back to that Firebase console. The Firebase console automatically opened to our project. Notice this UI indicates that Quick Start is already a Firebase project. When adding Identity Platform to a Google Cloud project, a Firebase project is automatically created. First, let's deal with this pop-up. It's up to you whether you want to check off to use the default settings for Google Analytics data or just to select Do This Later. Some Firebase products depend on analytics, like A-B testing. So if you decide to incorporate other features, you will probably want to enable this. Again, it's entirely up to you. When you click on the project settings, notice that the settings are identical to the Cloud Quick Start project. Firebase has basically added some more details and functionality to the Cloud project, similar to when you enable an API or add software from the marketplace. Since you want to add Identity Platform to an Android app, select Add App Android. This gives you a window with a series of steps to follow. Now keep in mind when you pick the Android package name, it must match the package name of your Android app. The app nickname is totally up to you. You can leave it blank if you prefer. I don't provide the SHA-1 certificate since I'm not using any of the products for which it is required. But if you plan on implementing Google sign-in or phone number sign-in in auth, feel free to add the SHA-1 here before creating the app. You can also add it later. Now you are prompted to download a Google Services JSON file. 
This file informs your Android app about the Firebase app so you can interface with Firebase products. Once downloaded, add this to your Android project. Click Next in the console, and it gives you the next step. Add the Gradle dependencies required to use Firebase. In addition to the Gradle files required to build Firebase app, you also need specific Gradle file to use Firebase auth. Add the following project level and app level dependencies. You can see them here. In your app in Android Studio, declare an instance of Firebase auth. OK. Now you can use the Firebase auth SDK to sign up, log in, log out, and get user info about an Identity Platform user. Identity Platform gives you access to many different login providers, including federated identity providers like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. You can enable several login methods for an app, allowing your users to authenticate the way that they prefer. Some login methods may require additional steps, which are listed in the console when you enable that login method. See the documentation below for information on how to implement other login providers. For now, let's get back to implementing email and password login. In the Cloud Console, create a fake user with a test email and a test password. Of course, you can create a new user from the client, but this is a good way to get your app up and running quickly. See how to create a user in your Android app following the link below. In OnStart, call a function called login. This function calls the Firebase auth method sign in with email and password, passing the email and password you created in the Cloud Console. When the sign in function completes, the onComplete listener is called, passing the auth result task. If the task is successful, then you are signed in. I've added a log and toast to reflect this. If the sign in fails, I display this as well, just for a reference right now. So it's clear that my example thus far is not a complete auth solution. You need a way for users to create accounts, handle password resets, and log out. Each of these functions needs some UI development as well. If you prefer, you can write all of this functionality yourself using the Firebase guides as reference. But you also have the option to use the Firebase auth UI module. This open source UI was created by auth specialists at Google. It includes all the views you would need to implement account creation, login, logout, and password reset functionality. You can incorporate AuthUI in just a few lines of code. Personally, whenever I start a new project, I use Firebase UI so I can focus on the key features of my app while still protecting data through authentication. But whether you make your own UI or use Firebase UI, you will very likely need to know the auth status before performing any app actions. For example, you want to check if there is a user logged in before writing to a database. That's where getting the current user comes into play. Let's look at how to implement that functionality. To get the currently signed in user, call get current user on your Firebase auth instance. You may have noticed that this function was already called in the on success listener. If the appearance of your UI depends upon whether there is a current user, you can call get current user in on start. I put the code to log out in this separate function called log out. I'm going to call this function at the end of the on success listener if the login was successful. Of course, it's unusual to log in only to log out immediately, but this is purely for the sake of example, so you can see the log out function run. OK. I build and run the app. And the console logs show that the user is logged in and then logged out. Congratulations. You just added Identity Platform to an Android app. Ready to see what else Identity Platform can do? Check out the Firebase Auth Android Guides, Auth Quick Start Code, and Firebase YouTube channel. And subscribe to the Google Cloud Platform channel so you can be the first to know about new videos in the Who's There series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on a future episode.